So section seven, also very short and sharp, very focused. We've discussed what the myotomes are. Here's how we're going to assess them. You can go to paramedicine.com, download the PowerPoint. How do we assess the myotomes? So we've talked about how um, the nerves exit from the spine. The first ones we tested are the sensory nerves, and that's just us touching them. The next one we're going to assess is the um, myotomes, and we're going to test whether or not they can move their body. And specifically, we're looking at whether or not they can move their neck, whether or not they can move all the joints of their arms and all the joints of their legs. So if we think about it, starting at the neck, all the things that are associated with the neck and then go down the arm and then start at the hips and go down the hips, we're just going to ask them to move everything. So here's how we do that. The first thing is flex X. So we're going to ask them to flex their neck and extend their neck. And then the next thing we're going to ask, what else can you do with your neck is turn it to the side, one side to the other. So we're doing lateral flexion with our head. That's about all you can do with your neck. Then we get down to the shoulders. We ask them to do a shoulder shrug. And you can see here, I've got the, the myotome nerves listed on the side there. With the shoulder shrug, it also involves cranial nerve 11. If you remember from our cranial nerves, when we went down the hole, all the way down the hole was lifting up the shoulder. So if you've done that already, you don't need to repeat this because we've already tested it. Then we're gonna do shoulder abduction. What's that? Shoulder abduction is when you put your arms up like that. And when they're in this position, then what we can ask them to do to make a nice sort of flow to the nervous exam is put their hands down in front of them and do the pizza box pronator drift. And that's where I throw the pronator drift in. Um, now, obviously, I should have said this at the beginning, don't do this if they've got a broken arm or they've dislocated their shoulder or they've got a broken neck. This is only if they're able to make these movements safely, okay? In the setting of trauma or injuries or something like that, then we just don't do it. And, you know, we'll say, well, we couldn't assess their, um, you know, C5 because they've got a dislocated shoulder. Okay, so pronator drift I normally throw in there. Then we've basically done the neck. If you think about it, we've gone this way, we've gone this way, we've done this, that's all we need. Throw in the pronator drift because it's handy. Next, we're gonna take a look, we've done the shoulders, so what can the elbow do? The elbow can flex and the elbow can extend. So we put our hands on the wrist and ask them to flex, and we put our hands on the back of the wrist, ask them to extend, and we do that with both arms. Are they able to do it? Is there roughly equal strength? Then we go down to the fingers. And what are the things that we can do with the fingers? Well, we can flex them or we can extend them. So we ask them, just do this, make a fist, and then open up your fingers. And you'll see sometimes neurologists will hold on and do the different fingers. We don't have to get that funky. Just, can they flex? Can they extend? Ask them to make a fist, ask them to spread out their fingers. That's it, nice and simple. Next one, we've gone down to the end of the arm, so let's go down to the hips. The first thing we're going to do is flex our hips. So to flex our hips, what we often will say to the patient is, can you lift your knee up and try to touch your chest with your knee? That's the flexion. We can't really extend our hips very far to the back. That's not terribly useful. So we're going to go from the hips there down to the knees. And just like the elbows, we're going to have them straighten their leg and bend their leg and do that a little bit against resistance. Then we go down to the ankle and we're gonna do dorsiflexion. So if this is my ankle, I'm going to lift my toes up towards my head. Ask them to point their toes towards your head. And we're gonna do one other myotome test here, which is called hallux dorsiflexion, which is where you put your thumb on their big toe and ask them to point up to your head with all of their toes, including their big toe, and you just test the rough strength and make sure that they're actually able to give you the, the thumbs up with their big toe towards their head. Quick, simple test. Then we do ankle plantar flexion, and what we normally say to those people is, uh, I'm going to put my hands on the bottom of your feet, press against my hands like you're pressing down on a gas pedal, and while we're there, because we've gone down to the feet, we're going to do the plantar Babinski reflex, which I haven't discussed yet. That's coming soon um, when we do the reflexes, but this is where we do it. So that's it. Really simple. Just again, all you've got to do is learn the process from head to toe. And if you remember the different things that you're supposed to test, right, then you'll be doing fine. This, this, hips, down you go. It, it takes a minute. 
It takes a minute if everybody's uh, if the patient's fine and there's no deficits. Very simple to do. Put this chart into your phone and if they're unable to do something and you haven't yet committed the actual myotomes to memory, then you can just look it up in the chart. Leave some questions if you got them. Happy to answer.